Hits DJ Lunchbox of the Wrestling Mayhem Crew at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. What's up, guys? This is Sorg. We're back again uh, with LB on, and on the line for the special Valentine's it, Valentine's edition of the Wrestling Mayhem Show is Cody Diener. How you doing tonight? Not too bad. How you guys doing? All right, all right. Yeah, we realized we realized uh, this week when we scheduled this interview, what better uh, guy to have on uh, pre Valentine's Day than the the guy we all know for his uh his uh goings on with ODB and TNA. Oh geez, yeah. I'm not, we're not going to get like romantic here or anything, are we? Uh, we are not going to get romantic. <laughs> no. Uh... Oh, you're not. Okay, good. <laughs> I've just heard some crazy things about your show. I don't. I don't know how you guys roll. I've, oh, I've uh, just... yeah. There, there. Well, there have been some questionable moments, but uh, oh. you know, oh. some questionable moments. <laughs> okay, there have been a lot of questionable moments, but uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, it, it, things things happen when you're live and and you're unplugged like we are. You know. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> some things just happen. So. Um, so well, yeah. You know, let's get right right off uh, now. Uh, now you're yep. no you're no longer employed by TNA, correct? That is correct. Uh, can you tell us? Well, you know what happened. This is only I think a few weeks ago. This happened. It um, um, was it a contract ending or uh, or is, is something else come down or what happened there? Um, well, it was my contract was um, expiring, and they okay. just decided that they did not want to um, renew it. Um, it was a what I was told was uh, with all the new uh, talent coming in um, that there wasn't going to be room for me. There was, you know, going to be some other guys in my, my same position that, you know, guys like myself that weren't getting a lot of TV time to begin with. And with the new guys coming in, it was going to be even less. So instead of, you know, keeping me around and not using me, um, they wanted to, you know, cut me loose and set me free and okay. let me go make a living elsewhere. Okay. Um, I didn't really realize at the time, this is before, you know, all the guys they brought in now came in. So now I'm watching the show and seeing yeah, they were right. They are, have definitely brought in a whole bunch of new guys. And, and of course, a lot of it, and we talk about a lot here on the show, it is a lot of a lot of older talent, like guys like the Nasty Boys and, and, mm-hmm. and stuff. I mean, uh, is it, uh, you know, what, what's your opinion about those being the guys that are kind of replacing you? Um, I was I was asked that. Um a couple of weeks ago, and the thing is, right now, it's very important for TNA to um, be careful with who they decide they want the face of their company to be, mm-hmm. um, because they're, they are getting new fans with these guys that they are bringing in, um, and with Hogan joining the team, they are bringing in new fans. The ratings show that, so it's important right now that they that they establish their, and they're almost rebranding themselves in a way, um, and it's obst- it's important for them to establish uh, the face of that brand. Um, and I think they've got to be careful because there's a lot of TNA originals there that the, the fan base that they've built up all these years, there's guys that those fans want to see. Mm-hmm. And if a lot of those guys start disappearing, um, they just might piss off a lot of their hardcore diehard fans so they've got to be careful they've got to be careful with that okay. um so i don't think there's anything wrong with bringing in veterans um and you know to teach the young guys and to help draw in people that haven't watched wrestling in years i don't think there's anything wrong with that it's just they do they do got to be careful with with who those guys are going to be and how many guys that you know they're going to bring in of course, and, uh, and now, and, and we've seen reports in the past that TNA uh, has kind of a, I don't know if we can call it kind of a revolving door policy where uh, talent will be on for a while and, and they'll let them go for a while and then bring them back maybe, you know, uh, three, six months later. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I take it you were you were let go on good terms. Do you think you might be one of those that we see pop up uh, every so often? Uh, definitely. Um, I couldn't have left on better terms than I was told by um, everyone in management positions and creative team that uh, the door is always open for me. And uh, the, you know, the thing is, wrestling is all about timing and uh, being in the right place at the right time. And I have not burned any bridges there. And uh, I do think um, my time will come again where I can uh, get back on the show and uh, play a bigger role in the show and really show uh, TNA and, more importantly, the fans, you know, what I have to offer. Um, the wrestling business and what I have to offer, other than just being a 
a funny, goofy dude on TV. <laughs> um, and of course, uh, now you you were there, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, at least a few weeks into the new uh, regime, as they've been calling it. Uh, did you have any interactions with with Hogan or Bischoff uh, in, in the long run, or you know, and, and how was that? Mm-hmm. You did no, like I I was there just before that uh, new regime, as you're calling it, came in. Um, he really didn't show up until January 4th on okay. that live uh, taping. He wasn't there before that, um, and I wasn't there for that show. I was two weeks before that. The lot, their first live Monday night was going to happen. I got released uh, the, the pay-per-view um, before that, so I wasn't there. So I did not get to have any interactions with uh, Hogan or Bischoff or any of the new guys that came in, though. What was the general feeling uh, uh, going into it? I mean, there's a lot of talk about whether people were, uh, uh, you know, looking forward to it or not. I mean, was there a lot, and a lot of people that have dealt with uh, Hogan and Bischoff before, um, I mean, was there a general, like, okay, this is awesome for the company, or, or were they worried about, you know, kind of, you know, the way things have gone in the past that people didn't like with these guys? It was both. I mean, there's certain guys that uh, were excited because they knew that this could potentially, you know, be a shot in the arm that TNA needed and bring them to the next level. Mm-hmm. Um, but by nature, uh, most wrestlers are paranoid <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, 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 you know, worried um, about what they're going to be doing um, and where they're going to be in the next week or a month from then or a year. Um, and it's just very typical for, for wrestlers to be paranoid. And there was definitely some of that going on, um, knowing that Hogan was coming in and new guys were being brought in. I mean, the, the show was only two hours long and mm-hmm. there's only so much time that can be given to certain guys. So it's obvious that, you know, with the amount of time that TNA has on TV, only so many guys are going to be able to be on the show. And, uh, so there was definitely worries um, from from people backstage about where this was going to go, for sure. Definitely, it is definitely it definitely seems to be a pretty loaded roster with TNA. We, I mean, there's been a lot. You know, we've we've talked about there's always been a lot of awesome talent on there. You know, up and down. Uh, yeah. You know, we, you know whether you agree a little bit about who you know the older guys on top or not, of course. And and really few people that I know we've we've complained about here like individually on the show. We, we, you know, for us, I, I think I think the only complaints we get are about the show in general and everything. But um, but but we definitely agree with the uh, the the length aspect there. Um, while we're in TNA, let, let's talk about your 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 time there. Uh, like I said, Valentine's Day, ODB. <laughs> I mean, we got come on. Okay, first of all, my first question. When I'm you know I'm always. Fascinated with ODB as a character on that show and everything. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, now, now we see her her rough exterior uh, in the ring and everything, and and in your you know in the promos and everything. Uh, uh-huh. Is she really just a girly girl when she gets off camera? <laughs> no, she's no, not. Absolutely not. Not at all. Actually, uh, she is. Uh, she's ODB twenty four seven. The ODB you see on TV. Is just the volume's turned up a couple notches, but uh, no man, she is not a girly girl, and uh, she is one badass chick. Uh, she's a cool chick, and she's a funny chick. Uh, she was really cool to hang out with and work with for sure. Awesome. So definitely, no, she's not a girly girl. Awesome. Um, I was uh, I was looking a, a little bit about about your past and everything, and it looks like. Because we were wondering about you know the Cody Deaner as as a, as a character you know what we see on TV if that was something developed uh, for TNA uh, uh, when when they brought you in but but you this is Cody Deaner this is this is the Cody Deaner that that you've been even uh, pre TNA correct oh yeah yeah I was doing uh, I was you know uh, doing shows and working and paying my dues on the indies uh, for close to ten years before I got my contract mm-hmm. and. Five of those years, six of, five to six of those years were um, as Cody Deaner. Um, so this was not uh, a case of a creative team coming up with a character and handing me a script and saying, okay, this is a character we've written for you, go do it. This is something that I have spent years developing. Excellent. Now, so basically uh, uh, you got you got uh, hooked up. How did you, how did you get uh, discovered by the company? I... Uh, 
I made myself get discovered, actually. <laughs> I went up to Nashville, or went down to Nashville and down to Florida for about four summers before I got a contract, um, just to be seen. Um, I knew I had a gimmick that was made for TV and could would be good on TV, and I knew um, I deserved to be on TV. So I went down there my own dime and uh, just, you know, got to know a lot of the wrestlers, got to know some people in management, and, um, you know, gave them a package, and they were interested. And um, like I said earlier, it was all about, it's all about timing. And they, for about two years before I got signed, um, there was heavy interest. And they were saying, you know, there was ideas being thrown around creatively on how I could be brought into the company. And, uh, you know, finally the timing was right, and they brought me in. Excellent. And, of course, it was like just a no-brainer sticking with ODB, I guess, in the end. Yeah, there was a lot of different talk of, uh, you know, how they were going to bring me in and, um, like, whether I was going to be brought in you know, on my own or separately or what was, what was the deal was going to be. And, uh, I was watching the show and I felt like it was a no brainer to put me with ODB. And, uh, I pitched that. Um, I didn't pitch the idea on how to bring me in, but I, I did pitch the idea that a pairing with me and ODB would be a really good idea and make a lot of sense. And that ended up being the, the, the one that they went with. And it did. It made perfect sense. Awesome. Um, now, now with your time, uh, there with, uh, do, doing the, the program with ODB and everything, uh, mm-hmm. you, I, I was disappointing because I was like, you know, I remember the whole knockouts division thing that happened. And I was disappointed to see that you are not recognized as a, as a, uh, one time knockouts champion on TNA's website. Yeah. They, uh, Cause I guess I, not. You know, in relation, I mean, WWE, I believe, still recognizes Harvey Whippleman as, as a women's <laughs> champion. So I think you're getting gypped on this. And I think you need to take it up with management if you ever come back to TNA. Well, I mean, if you go on my MySpace, um, there's pictures there of me um, with the TNA knockout belt. Or if they're not up there, I have them in in I have them in front of me. I have them at home, mm-hmm. so I have photographic evidence that I did hold literally the TNA knockout title. Yeah. So I have photographic evidence. If anyone wants please to, please tell me. <laughs> please tell me at these indie shows that you're working that you're selling pictures of you with that belt. This is true. But yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if, if now you, I, I I have a question for you. Uh, yeah. This is this is lunchbox here. Now this is uh-huh. this is a big question. This is a burning question. I know a lot of people <laughs> are curious about this. It's time I think that we here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show we set this record straight. Okay. Okay. Is the mullet real? <laughs> Quick answer: Yes. Uh, a little story behind that. Um, I've actually had a number of people ask me that, and a number of workers ask me that. And Victoria, when she, I was there when, on her first day with TNA, and uh, I went into <laughs> the makeup room um, to talk with ODB, and she was sitting in her chair, and she said, oh, have you come in to get your extensions put in? And I said, What? She said, you know, your extensions for the back of your hair. And I turned around, and it was in a ponytail. I said, no, this is 100% real, baby. Give her a tug. And she pulled on it, and she's like, oh, my God. <laughs> she couldn't believe it. She says, if anyone's living their gimmick, it's Cody Diener. <laughs> it's 100% real, baby. <laughs> nice, nice. Do you have any hair care tips for uh, other mullet wearers out there? Uh, no. I mean, other than you just got to keep it feathered and dangerous. I mean, that's the key to having a mullet. You know, you just keep it feathered, and there's always has to be an element of danger uh, involved. So, and you got to, if you're going to wear a mullet, you, you've got to have a certain swagger about you because uh, people, I know this from walking down the street. Some people uh, give you certain looks, and, uh, you know, you got to be able to put, put up with that. And if anyone gives you slack, you've got to be ready to uh, throw down and give her if, if anyone's giving you problems. So you get you gotta you gotta uh, walk the walk if you guys if you're looking like me. <laughs> I think I think that's gonna be the uh, title of our show this week: feathered but dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> now now I got this picture up here, uh, um, which is kind of appropriate because uh, one uh, you know, one uh, when when uh, looking up stuff about you, I see 
you actually grew up around the trailer park. This is pretty hundred percent, and we have a picture up of you by a trailer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, what I did not know that you were a Canadian redneck. I am. Uh, I've I've spent time in both the United States and in Canada, but I am uh, a Canadian redneck. Canadian rednecks do exist. Mm -hmm. uh, the town that I grew up in uh, has three trailer parks. Um, so I've spent lots of time in a trailer park, around trailer parks, around people that uh, dwell in trailer parks. Um, so I'm no stranger to that. Um, but yes, I am a, a Canadian redneck. Wow. A lot of Southern people don't realize that those, that we exist, but we do. Wow, wow! Uh, it is a it, it, it's amazing from a fellow uh, uh, early life trailer uh, dweller uh, myself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, like then the question is, uh, uh, so so so, what's the difference between a Canadian redneck and an American redneck? Well, really, the there's not a whole lot different between a Canadian redneck and are the trailers American more redneck, in, are the, other than the fact that we've got to be able to withstand harsh winters in our trailer. That was one, we, that was one so, question. Is the trailer more insulated? Yes. You, you, it's called winterizing. <laughs> you can winterize a trailer. I know. You, in, you insulate it and you winterize it and get it ready for the cold weather. 100%. Yes. And that's what us cane wrecks need to do. We need to winterize our trailers. Because I know even in our western PA area in the snow belt, you felt the wind every damn time. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the other main difference is that our beer stronger. No, oh, well, of course. So. Of course. <laughs> so, so that's really the, the other main difference between a Canadian and an American redneck is that a Canadian redneck drinks stronger beer. Always. <laughs> always. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um and then, and then, kind of, kind of as an addition, to that since you are, you've been spent a lot of time wrestling Canada. I mean, what's uh, uh, uh Sean uh, from the Sean Soundoff uh, email earlier asked, uh, what's the difference between the uh, American and Canadian fans to you? I, I guess, kind of in, in contrast, how do they respond to the redneck gimmick uh, between the two countries? Well, it's a universal, it's a universal character. I mean, like I said, there's mm -hmm. there's Canadian rednecks and there's American rednecks, and a lot, when I'm doing indies. I mean, a lot of shows I'm going to are small town, uh, rural areas. Um, and when I, any town I go to, whether it's, you know, small town Ontario, Canada, or, you know, small town Nashville, Tennessee, um, I'm, I'm recognizable and they, I can identify with those people and I get a res positive response every time. Every time. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I found a video online of uh, uh something from TNA, and I have to ask, mm -hmm. what was like? What was it like meeting the Woody Woodpecker? Oh wow! <laughs> it was uh, it was a dream come true. It was a dream come true. <laughs> he talks and everything. He talks and everything. I found out later that it was all a work. There's actually a dude in that costume. I was so disappointed. Oh. They didn't. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't get that on camera. There was just some ugly dude that was half in the bag wearing a Woody Woodpecker costume. I couldn't believe it. I was so disappointed. Yep. And the shark wasn't real either. Uh <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> so, uh, Launchbox, anything from the chat room over there? As a cat apparently attacks your face. Sorry, I'm being attacked. I can't check. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let me, let me look here. Um, uh no no oh, uh, okay. they're 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 confused and fr uh, very confused by the thought of a Canadian redneck. Uh, guys in the <laughs> chat, if you do have any questions, uh, lay it on us here. We're we're happy to pass them along. All right, I, I know I do. There, have... There's a movie. Um, if anyone's confused, there's a movie called uh, Fubar, F U B A R, um, and it's a Canadian film and it's about Canadian rednecks. Um. It's a Canadian film about Canadian rednecks. So if anyone is is uh, questioning uh, the lifestyle of a Canadian redneck, try to find that that film. Nice, nice. Whoa. Um, so I do have a question here. A lot of lead in. Uh, uh, Big Freaky uh, has been a, a recent contributor to the show, and he is a big fan of the Indies. A big freaky of the Indies around here and. Uh, Western PA in Ohio. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And he is has seen you at the NWA show in Niles, Ohio, mm -hmm. if you recall back to this date. Uh, he gives me a lot of background on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently, you were facing... Sorry, it's a, it's a long email. Um, you and Tyson Ducks were teaming up to take on the Irish Brothers. Uh, oh, okay, yes, yes, okay. yes. First, first he asks, uh, what were your memories of that show, and uh, what would you say to the fans uh, who, who won't go to another indie show? <sighs> okay, I, I, so is it's there... Tyson Dukes, actually. Okay. Um, and what was the second part of the question? Uh, and uh, what would you say to the fans who won't go to another indie show? Uh, it, Big Freaky has a, has a lot of questions. He 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 about indie shows and uh, what gets oh. people to come and everything. And, and he's been kind of analyzing this as he writes into the show recently. So he's right. posing the question. I, I I take it some. I, I'm not familiar with what may have happened at the show. Uh, uh, I don't really know what might have happened at the show that might have angered any fans or made them not want to come. Mm -hmm. uh, what I do remember about that show, as soon as I came through the curtain, uh, I got a lot of slack because of my haircut. And <laughs> there was a group of about 10 guys. I don't know if this guy was in that group, but there was a group of about 10, 20-something-year-old uh, college kids that they saw my vest, and my vest had a big wolf on the back of it, and they fell in love with my vest, and they just kept wolf vest for like the entire match. Um, so that was one memory of that match. Um, and as far as the uh, um, answering the question as to why will I say to someone that wouldn't go to an indie show again, um, I guess it depends on your experience. I would understand... Um, I understand people getting turned off from indie shows that I have um, been to a number of indie shows that um, are just bad business. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I would have known better, I wouldn't have been a part of the show. Mm -hmm. But I mean, a lot of times you get booked on a show and you get there and you realize, you know, this is not um, a locker room full of credible professional wrestlers. Um so a lot of the times there, there's a lot of crap out there. Um, this this promotion definitely was not that. It was NWA, and there's a lot of good uh, wrestlers on the show, including the guys that uh, Ian Tyson Dukes were wrestling against. Um, so I don't really know what could happen on that show specifically. Mm -hmm. But if you do see a crappy indie show out there as a fit, and um, do your research and um, on the promotion you're going to see and look at the roster and see if there's anyone you know or anyone that you've you know heard about or if there's been any buzz about them on the internet and just do some research and there's really really good good um actually just a second here guys <laughs> i'm getting an <laughs> incoming call here okay <laughs> sorry sorry first i think it might it might be mrs deaner and on valentine's day you can't you can't oh. say no to mrs deaner a second, I might be getting in, in a lot of trouble right now. <laughs> That's all right. Folks, if you're just joining us, uh, we are speaking with former TNA uh, wrestler Cody Diener uh, here on the Mayhem Show. And uh, Okay, I'm back. He's Sorry, back. guys. He's false back. alarm. Everything's good with the, the Mrs. Diener? She's, it's okay. I okay. told her what the deal was, and she, when, I, when she found out that uh, I was talking to you guys, she, she was okay. Fantastic. She thought I was, she thought I was chatting with ODB. Oh. Um, but that's oh, over. I see. She, she'd know that, yeah. Um, sorry. So what I was saying, um, do your research. If you're uh, looking at indie shows, just do your research because there's a lot of crap out there, but there's a lot more good than there is bad um, mm -hmm. out there. So you just got to just gotta do your research and, and uh, before you go out to an indie show. Um, and you kind of answered part of it. He had a second question kind of relating to this. Um, mm -hmm. he, he asked, what, uh, what do you feel uh, uh, should be done by wrestlers and fans to, that, that would like to stop uh, shows that, which I presume he's you know talking about this show in general, um, uh, about shows with, uh, quote, garbage talent, as he puts it. Um, mm. You mentioned the fans uh, doing your research and everything, but um, I mean, is there anything really the wrestlers can do other than kind of... Um, this has actually been a really hot topic in Ontario. Oh, yeah. There's been talk um, in Ontario indie wrestling to almost start... Um, not a union, um, 
union talks just never go anywhere. It's not a union. It's more like, more like a guild of wrestlers um, that decide whether a show is credible or not. Um, so a bunch of bookers and um, veteran wrestlers all get together and decide, look at all the promotions and decide which ones they're going to give their stamp of approval on. And for the ones that are credible and good, um, they get a stamp of approval from the wrestling guild. Um, and if they're not, then um, they don't get the stamp of approval. Um, and then the question was, well, how do we deal with those people that aren't approved? And then that's when wrestlers start to go overboard and decide, oh, well, we're going to show up at the show and, uh, you know, physically force them to stop running the show and uh, threaten them and blah, 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 blah. So um, you can't stop anyone from running a show. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's just going to happen. There's going to be garbage out there. Um, all you can do... Um, all I can do and what I've done in the past when I do end up going to these shows is I sit down with the promoter and talk to them um, one-on-one and explain to them why what they're doing is bad for the business and why the wrestlers that they have on wrestling on their show suck. <laughs> you know? <laughs> just just be honest with them because sometimes they, they don't know. Mm-hmm. They think that they're awesome. And they think that what they're doing is going to be the next big thing, and they're going to be the next Vince McMahon. They just haven't—they have no idea. So I sit down and tell them exactly what's wrong with what they're doing, why they shouldn't be doing it. And there's been a couple promoters that have actually listened to me and um, have stopped doing what they were doing and have gone on to run credible independent promotions. Wow, that's awesome! I get that, and I don't hear too many people doing that. Um... And I, I know even around this area, we a lot of people complaining about people. Uh, obviously, shows like this and uh, and, and uh, uh, quote untrained backyarder uh, talent. Uh, mm-hmm. But that's uh, yeah, it's pretty much same same thing as in Ontario. I think a, a stamp of approval would be a great idea. You know. Yeah, and it, that's a hard thing to enforce. So, like, I think it's a great idea in theory. Actually, doing it and enforcing it is a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. So, on a grassroots level, small scale level, I mean, I just try to do what I can. And whether it's taking a wrestler aside and telling them, "Look, man, if you want to make it in this business, you got to stop doing what you're doing. You got to get, you know, trained. You're just going to hurt yourself, and you're not doing yourself any favors." Um, I've done that numerous times. Or if it's going to the promoter, like I said, just talking with people and explaining to them what's wrong because. A lot of the times they don't know any better, um, and for the ones that do and are going to do it anyways, then you know you can't reach those guys. You just uh, let them go out there, and and they're just going to end up hurting themselves, and they're not going to make it anywhere in the business anyways. Great, great. Um, uh, well, uh, lunchbox. Uh, yeah. Um, well, speaking speaking of the independents and things like that, uh, where. Uh where can fans see you? Where have you been um, turning up? Um, I wrestle regularly um, in Ontario for a, a promotion. They've just changed their the name of the promotion to Classic Championship Wrestling. They used to be called Pro Wrestling Extreme. And uh, this is actually one of the promotions that I was telling you about that when they initially started their promotion, um, they did have some backyarders on their show, and I sat down with the promoter. His name is Jay McDonald, and I told him um, what he needed to do to uh, make his business run properly and how to do the business right. And uh, he listened to me, and this was five years ago. Um, and now he runs shows uh, about every two, three months, and every summer we have a big fair show. Um, and this past fair, I uh, had a steel cage match, and we drew a 1,000 people. Nice. Um, so, which is really good for an independent promotion. Um, so he's doing it right and he runs very good shows and has a lot of good talent. Um, so I'm popping up there all the time. Um, you can check them out. Uh, it's classic championship wrestling. I think it's classic dash championship dash wrestling.com. Um, I'm going to be wrestling this weekend, uh, in Wyandotte, Michigan for promotion MCWA. I'm wrestling for the heavyweight championship against the sharp-dressed man. So you've got uh, 
the redneck Cody Diener versus the sharp dressed man. That should be uh, an interesting matchup. Um, and I'm also going to be uh, wrestling for um, IWF in Niagara Falls, New York. Um, and there's got a lot of good talent on the show, including Brody Lee, Pepper Parks, Fabulous John McChesney. Um, a lot of good guys on that show, so that's going to be a really good see, show. Too. John McChesney, friend of the show, we see him. We see him uh, every couple of months here in IWC around town. Oh yeah, yeah. I've uh, I've worked with him uh, numerous times. I haven't seen him in a while, um, so it's going to be good to hang out with him again. But I've worked with him a bunch of times, and he's a fabulous talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we've, we've been a big fan of him down here. Definitely, definitely. Um, um, we do have a couple questions from the chat here, uh, both from uh, the Wolf eighty seven. Uh, he wants to know, is Foley really creepy? <laughs> uh, not at all. Not at all. Um, he was, it was very surprising when I met Mick Foley. He was like a, it was very refreshing is the word I use when I describe Mick Foley. Um, cause I looked up to him when I, um, when I was younger and I was breaking into the business. He was one of the guys that I really looked up to and, and he was a hero of mine. And when I met him for the first time, it was so refreshing to meet him. He's so down to earth. Uh, he's just a really nice man. Um, he's a family man. I mean, the guy's a millionaire, but you, 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 he can't tell by the way he acts and, and, and by the way he dresses. I mean, the guy, <laughs> the guy wears dirty t-shirts and jogging pants everywhere he goes. So if you, th- if you consider that creepy, I guess maybe he is kind of creepy. But, uh, no, he, he's a really cool guy. D- does he really drive a, a, a crappy minivan like he's been talking about on, uh, TV lately? Yes. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, I saw him. He brought his family to uh, Orlando um, a few months ago cause, uh, to ride on the on the roller coasters. They got a new roller coaster in the theme park there, and he, uh, a lot of people know that Mick Foley is a a roller coaster fanatic. Um, mm-hmm. And we were pulling out of the out of the parking lot of the hotel, and there was Mick Foley, you know, cramming his kids and his wife and his teenage championship belt into his dirty minivan. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was quite a sight to be seen. <laughs> wow! And uh, he also asks, um, "Would you would you ever be willing to work for uh, Ring of Honor?" And uh, I'd like to extend that uh, question a little bit uh, to include uh, Dragon's Gate as well. Yeah, um, definitely. Those are uh, both promotions that uh, I respect um, a lot, like what those guys are doing, and. Um, if I was approached by either company, um, 100%, I would uh, love to talk with them and uh, get involved with them. Um, I think a, a lot of people aren't are only familiar with my work on TNA. Mm-hmm. You know, me being the goofy character and not supposed to be a, a fan that doesn't know how to wrestle. So I didn't really have um, a lot of opportunity on that program to show what I can do between the ropes. Um, and, you know, we know that Ring of Honor and Dragon Gate, they're really wrestling based and they're all about the talent, um, and what you can do in between the ropes. So unfortunately, I haven't been able to show a lot what I, a lot of what I have to offer, um, on TV. But yeah, I could hang with those guys. No problem. I could hang in those promotions and I, I, I think, uh, that'd be great. So yes, I would definitely consider working with those guys. Excellent. Excellent. Um, Oh, also, actually, that that reminded me of another another thing. Uh, you actually worked a little bit with WWE, right? Yes. Um, can you tell us, I think you had a dark match. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a. I had a dark match against Muhammad Hassan. <laughs> um, he's a where are they now guy. Um, <laughs> and uh, I was on TV. I uh, was part of the Kurt Angle Invitational when he was doing that gold mm-hmm. medal gimmick years ago. I was one of the guys that he. Kicked in the mouth and beat up one week on SmackDown. So that was pretty awesome. cool. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, did, did he remember you when you, uh, you ran into him in TNA? He didn't um, because I looked so different. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, uh, I had, you know, long flowing hair and no facial hair, and I was a clean cut young kid when I did that. So uh, I actually told him, I said, hey, I I uh, worked a few years ago when you did the Kurt Angle Invitational thing. He's like, oh, yeah. And I uh, said, which one were you? And I said, I was the one that you kicked in the mouth. And he's like, oh, <laughs> cut off, sorry, I kicked a lot of guys in the mouth. <laughs> he usually didn't remember. <laughs> well, definitely, definitely. So, uh, well, uh, first of all, we like to have a, a big question to close this off. Uh, LB, do you have something for him? I do. Um, 
Uh, I just gotta think how to put it. Um. <laughs> I, well, he, I, well, he's little. He's little. He's little off because the cat appears to be attacking his face throughout this interview. She, she oh, has, I she, she has been uh, crawling all over <laughs> me. Okay. Um, if if you got a call from the WWE offering you a, a big big contract, a spot on SmackDown or Raw, something like that, huh? would you take the opportunity if it meant? You had to cut your mullet. Ooh, that's a tough one. <sighs> hmm. Yes, I would. Um, it would all, it, but it would also depend. I would need more information. I would need to know why they wanted me to do that, mm-hmm. and um, what they were looking for out of me. What if it was just if, if they wanted me to be, you know, Cody Deaner, the bald? Donkey riding gay activist, uh, <laughs> then, then no. <laughs> the answer would be no. But if they had me doing something that was good and worthwhile and it meant me needing, it meant me having to cut my hair, then yes, definitely. Awesome. awesome. Fantastic. What if it meant it was you teaming up with Jamie Noble and they brought back Nydia? Definitely. <laughs> uh, I'd do that. I could, that sure. Could... Jamie Noble's awesome. That could be a lot of uh, fun, actually. Be a great tag team. But, uh, it's funny when I was doing uh, I, before I signed with TNA, uh, I was trying to uh, get in with the WWE with my new character, and it was get, it got over with a lot of guys in creative. I actually had heard that, uh, I'm still to this day, there's guys in the WWE creative that have a Cody Deaner eight by ten up at their desk in their office, and <laughs> uh, so a lot of creative guys knew me, uh, and a lot of the talent there knew me and Carlito used to call me mullet Jamie Noble (laughs) (laughs) so he liked my gimmick and uh, he recognized that me and Jamie Noble would have been a real good fit together and I think that's that's what Jamie Noble is remembered for was that gimmick that he did with Nidia that was great they they could they could done a lot more with that so if if I was asked to come back and tag with Jamie Noble 100% the answer would be yes awesome uh well uh, you know we don't want to keep you too long in case the missus calls back again of course uh yeah i appreciate that guys <laughs> yeah she can get uh mrs diener can get uh, pretty upset if i'm on the phone too long but real quick can we get a liner from you real quick for the wrestling mayhem show sure what do you need uh just say hey who you are and uh you're listening to wrestling mayhem show and just run with it right. cool yeah <clears throat> go ahead this is cody diener you're listening to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And if anyone knows how to give her, it's Wrestling Mayhem. Give her. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for taking the time out. Uh, we hope, we hope we see you around, around Western PA, uh, in Ohio area again, definitely. So. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I will say this. I have a show coming up in March in Ohio. Okay. Um, however, I am a surprise on the show, so they are not <laughs> so, announcing me so, on their show, so, so we throw a um, guard at I'll give you a hint, I'll give you a hint, it is a promotion that I have worked for in the past before I was with TNA, okay. um, and it is in Ohio, so do your research, and I'm sure there's going to be fans out there that can figure it out. Some homework for the listeners. There you this go. This week, so, um... All right. Well, thank you very much. And of course, uh, you have a MySpace. Yes, MySpace uh, dot com backslash Cody Diener, um, and uh, email that uh, I have for uh, people if they want to book me, and that's Cody underscore Diener at hotmail dot com. So my MySpace and my email are two ways for uh, people and promoters and bookers to get a hold of me. Excellent. There's lots of videos up there, lots of pictures, uh, a few a few other interviews that you've done with uh, some other shows and stuff. And uh, uh, but go check that out. Thanks. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Hey, thank you guys. Hopefully we can do it again sometime. Definitely, definitely. Anytime. Right on. All right. Thanks.